part of the Press Play Podcast Network. From the Hyman blog and the Press Play Podcast Network, I'm J.D. Hyman. As a black man living here in America, I am living proof that while all men were created equal, not all men are equal. We're here to dig into the American political system, explore and unearth experiences from the human condition, and be a catalyst for some hard conversations that need to be had, conversations that demand to be had. No matter what brought you here, I'm glad you came. Once again, my name is JD, and this is the Hyman Podcast. Chapter 19, How Far We've Come, The State of the Podcast. A long time ago, in the not-too-distant past, I started this podcast as a way to connect with people from different walks of life. I wanted to understand different points of view to see the world from a different perspective. I wanted to challenge the status quo while at the same time remaining true to myself and my roots. I wanted to grow and to help other people grow. I wanted to shed light on situations that I felt did not get the attention they deserved, and I wanted to do it in a way that paid homage and respect to the people who did the real work. I wanted to highlight the lives of the real heroes while also exposing the villains as they walk among us. I wanted to heal others and be healed from wounds from this life and the one before. I wanted to be vulnerable in a way that few people are, but most of all, I wanted to have conversations. I wanted to start conversations. Over the course of the past couple of years, I have told you stories about life, liberty, and the ongoing pursuit of happiness, and it has been my absolute privilege. In the freshman season of this podcast, I told you my origin story, how I face racism and prejudice, and how it shaped who I am today. That was a really defining moment, not just for the podcast, but for me as well. It allowed me to express my true authentic self without fear of repercussions and judgment. And that was my intention with all the stories I told. To either let someone tell you their truth or to tell the truth of someone who otherwise couldn't. Patience is one of those things that you never ask for that you're oftentimes forced to live with. And in the course of everyday business, I have found that truth takes time. It's a finicky thing that is both delicate and intrusive. It can be painful and just as much it can be cathartic. I found in the time that I've been doing this podcast that people approach me differently. They approach me with purpose, civility, and a greater level of respect. Most of the time, it seems genuine, and I appreciate that. The podcast in and of itself was, is, and always will be a project of passion. It gives me a platform to express things in a way that might otherwise fall on deaf ears. It means a lot of things to a lot of people, but to me, the most important thing is what it means to me. Yes, I think other people's opinions matter, but with each episode, I have to ask myself, what is the virtue in doing this? What is the virtue in saying this? What is the proportionate response to what is happening in the world around us? This podcast only takes a snapshot of the time and place and effectively measures it against the past. And what it shows me is that the past and the present are not too different. Not really. The problems of the past are still here, just in different forms. We're still fighting the same fight, just with more technology. The screaming is still just as loud, and the end result of strife and war are still the same. The people who are left behind, they'll pick up the pieces and carry on. They will adapt. They will not be consumed by hatred, and they will not be stricken from the record. They will persevere. These are the people who will carry on the legacy and tell the stories that must be told. They will tell these stories to later generations of less deserving people. 
They will hold firm the truths that they know to be powerful, and they will make it known, both loud and clear, that the evidence of man was present in this world. It was fraught with hatred and pestilence and all the things that apocalypses are made of. And while it was plentiful of all these things, there was also love and light and hope and kindness. But in the end, it seems evil tends to win. And while for the most part, people genuinely do have good intentions, the old adage is right. The road to hell was paved with good intentions. Those of us who believe in right and wrong and justice and fairness are always left with a disadvantage. Some people believe in a system we know to be flawed both in logic and in practice. And what we have seen is that the overall human experience is always given precedence over the life of a single individual. While we may not all fully understand utilitarianism, we're all subject to its perils. We are the children of a broken past and a bleak future, yet we stand at the front of the line, prepared to take it on in whatever capacity it reveals itself to us. In the beginning and throughout this podcast, I have made it my mission to expose the justice system as this flawed institution that so many people have come to trust, myself included. Yes, I believed in the justice system. I rationalized that the good outweighs the bad, but my logic was flawed. Because thinking that the good outweighs the bad is not the perception I want to subscribe to. The flaws in the justice system run so deep that innocent people are locked away for large sums of their lives, some even for the rest of their lives. And it is so flawed that people can literally cross state lines with the intent and purpose to murder other people and get away with it. It's bewildering. While the justice system serves a purpose to adjudicate the crimes of persons accused, and while judges are arbiters of the law, we, the people, are the ones that are at its mercy. And while I tried to persuade myself that if we trust the system, it will right itself, but in thinking this, I learned one crucial yet defining truth, to wit, the life of even one person is not less important than the whole of mankind. So where do we go from here? Well, that's easy. We go further. We push the envelope. We break barriers and open doors. Doors that weren't meant to be opened by us, but will be anyway. We test the rules and the tensile strength of the fabric of justice and we see just exactly how far it'll bend before it breaks. I know, I know, I say all the time, those who push the limits discover that sometimes the limits push back. And you know what? Sometimes you have to do just that. We have to push through the pain and suffering, through the morass and all the things that cloud rational judgment. And sometimes we have to abandon reason and logic altogether because there's so much at risk and far too few people are willing to get their hands dirty. Because bad actors heretofore hid behind shields and darkness and are now exercising their entitlement in broad daylight and innocent people are caught in the crossfire. Let it be known that we will no longer be silent on the subject of our lives. We cannot and will not tolerate living in what is supposed to be the greatest nation in the world while at the same time being persecuted daily and without cause. I have come face to face with people who think they're better than me just because of the color of their skin. They said certain things or made certain innuendos and they did so under the auspices of political reverence or through the guise of humor and ignorance. And there were times where they took my power away. They gaslit and silenced me. They made me feel as though I was the burden and it took me a long time to come to terms with the realization that I in fact deserve the space I take up. This space belongs to me. And it wasn't that I earned it or had it gifted to me or was finally allowed to have it, but it was mine all along and every single one of them already knew it. And apropos of the concomitant stress and lethargy of fighting a battle that doesn't seem to end, at least we showed up. Someone once said that the hardest thing in the world was to live in it. And you know what? They were right. 
despite everything we've done as a country and as a people, we will always find ways to step over top of one another. There will always be those who think they can stand above the rest. You'll know them by their superiority and their lack of empathy. They'll ravage the people of this nation with little to no regard to anyone who doesn't look, talk, or believe the same way they do. They will talk about progress, and at the same time, they will reject it, as well as the minorities' plight to push for it. They will make their intolerance known, and they will wrap it in a nice, pretty bow of deceit and politics. They will raise acolytes as their legacies, and they will put them in positions of power and influence. They will be stuck in the ways of the old world, and they will die trying to preserve it. And while they'll do all these things and go to all these lengths, they will be met with the full force of the voices of the oppressed, and a war will wage, and they'll do their best to take it into the shadows. In the pursuit of justice and equality, we embark on a noble and transformative journey, one that has the power to reshape the world we live in. It is a call to action that resonates deeply within our hearts, urging us to rise above the barriers that divide us and strive for a society built on fairness and compassion. In the face of injustice, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, disheartened, or even powerless. But let us remember that throughout history, it has been the unwavering resolve of courageous individuals that has sparked remarkable change. From the civil rights movement to the fight against oppression, the relentless pursuit of justice has time and again triumphed over adversity. The path to justice and equality may be arduous, filled with obstacles and setbacks. Yet it is in these moments that our true strength and resilience emerge. We must remember that change begins within ourselves as we embrace empathy, understanding, and respect for everyone. By nurturing these qualities, we become beacons of hope and catalysts of change for a better world. Let us never forget that justice is not a privilege to be enjoyed by a few, but a right that belongs to every individual, regardless of their race, gender, religion, or socioeconomic standing. Our collective fight for justice and equality is a testament to the fundamental principles of fairness and human dignity. As we rise together, let us rise with compassion. Let us listen to the voices that have long been silenced, amplifying the stories of those who have been marginalized and oppressed. Let us stand up against discrimination and injustice, challenging the status quo and demanding accountability. Remember that the road to justice is not a solitary path. It is a collective effort that requires unity, solidarity, and collaboration. Together, we have the power to create transformative change, dismantling the systems that perpetuate inequality and paving the way for a future where justice and equality are not mere aspirations, but a lived reality. In the face of adversity, never underestimate the power of your voice, your actions, or your unwavering belief in truth. Each step you take, no matter how small, contributes to a larger movement that can reshape society. Your commitment and dedication matter. They inspire others to join the fight. They amplify the vision of a world where every individual can thrive and be treated with dignity. Together, we can create a legacy of change that future generations can look upon with gratitude and hope. In the tapestry of human history, the fight for justice and equality has shaped the course of nations and inspired generations. As we journey forward, let us remember the profound impact that our collective efforts can have on creating a fair and inclusive world. Though the path may be challenging, it is our shared determination that we find the strength to persevere. Let us hold steadfast in our commitment to justice, knowing that even the smallest actions can create ripples of change. Each act of kindness and advocacy moves us closer to a society where everyone is seen, heard, and valued. As we stand shoulder to shoulder, let our voices be a resounding call for accountability. Let us break down the walls of prejudice and ignorance and replace them with bridges of understanding and acceptance. Together, we can create a true quilt of America filled with diversity 
woven with threads of compassion, respect, and the potentiality of what our nation can be. In this ongoing pursuit, it is essential to recognize that change begins within each of us. Let us examine our own biases and privileges, fostering a genuine desire to learn, grow, and stand up against injustice wherever it may manifest. Even in the darkest of times, history has shown us that justice can prevail when people come together with a common purpose. So let's draw inspiration from those who have fought tirelessly before us and let their steely resolve ignite the fire of determination within our own hearts. As we embark on this journey of justice and equality, let us do so with open minds, open hearts, and a deep sense of empathy. Our efforts may be challenged, but let that not deter us from our mission, because the mission is what matters. With an unwavering determination, let us march forward, knowing that our collective actions can shape a world where justice and equality flourish for all. Let justice and equality be the ties that bind us together, creating a brighter, more equitable future. Together, let us write a story that inspires generations to come, one where the pursuit of justice and equality knows no bounds. No one said we had to accept the world as it is. No one said we had to accept any of this as it is. We have more say in how our world works than we give credit. I am a man of empiricism, reason, and logic. I believe in what I can see and touch and feel. I give no credence to psychology or any other discipline that bases itself on subjectivity. But sometimes, in order to get through this life, I have to believe in certain kinds of magic. So, let's walk out of the darkness and let hope be our guiding light. My name is J.D. Hyman, and this is the Hyman Podcast. I'll see you next time. The Hyman Podcast was written, edited, and produced by myself. Share with guests Whitney Hall and Mary Louise Layton co-produced and research. Cover art and branding by Kevin Aki. The theme music was composed and produced by Jim Yosef with additional music license from Epidemic Sound. The Hyman Podcast is a production of the Press Play Podcast Network. Press Play is staffed by Chase Smith, our CEO and fearless leader, iService Chief Operating Officer, and Brooks May is the Chief Creative Officer. To learn more about the network, sponsorships, guest appearances, or if you're interested in launching your own podcast on our network, visit us on the web at www.pressplaypodcast.com. To learn more about this podcast, our mission and vision, or for sponsorship information, please visit us on the web at www.jdhyman.com.